ever gotten one of those modem Wi-Fi wi router combos from your cable or internet service provider only to find out that the specs are absolute trash? Or worse, you can't even figure out what they are? Well, I have. And in today's episode, I'll show you how to use a third-party router with your internet service provider's hand-me-down here on East Coast Tech. What's going on guys? Andrew here with another episode of East Coast Tech. And in my apartment, I've actually managed to get Verizon Fios as my ISP, which boasts excellent download and upload speeds. They're still a bit douchey, like a typical utility company, but at least they have a good product. One thing I don't care for, however, is their special modem slash router access point combo thing that they pretty much force you to get. I say force because they very adamantly explain that only their box works with the fiber connection coming from outside. Uh, yada yada yada, science and away we go. I think the whole net neutrality debate has them a bit butthurt. Speaking of net neutrality, being forced to use their device for your routing needs should raise a few eyebrows as well. I mean, ISPs are always capable of monitoring or tracking your activity when you're on the internet, but now they can even monitor and traffic their connections with between your computers on the local network, which is kind of where I draw the line. Also, the modem and router combo from Verizon has a max theoretical output, uh, throughput, I should say, of 1750 megabits per second, and this router from ASRock that I have, the G10, has a max theoretical throughput of 2600. Um, more is definitely better in this kind of situation. To wrap up here, I'm going to essentially disable the wireless radio capabilities on the Verizon combo box and replace them with my own personal router. This process does begin with a little physical prep as we're going to need a few extra ethernet cables here. Please use Cat5e or 6 as they allow for up to one gigabit of theoretical throughput with a Cat5e and the Cat6 allows up for up to 10 gigabits. Before we get down to business, you are gonna need a computer hardwired to the modem slash router combo and then wired to your third-party router. Using only wireless devices will not work. With that out of the way, we can start. Using your computer or laptop that's hardwired to the ISP's router, connect it, connect to it in a web browser. The address is usually 192.168.something.something. For the Verizon box, go to wireless under basic wireless settings and turn off both the 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz radios. Then click Apply at the bottom of the page. Under Advanced Wireless Settings, click on the 2.4 GHz SSID broadcast and turn that off. Then click the 5.0 GHz SSD broadcast and turn that off as well. Now that the wireless access is shut off, click on Firewall. At the prompt, click Yes. Now under General for IPv4 settings and IPv6 settings, set both to minimum security, then click Apply at the bottom. Next, click My Network, then Network Connections, then Advanced. Now click 5.0 GHz Wireless Access Point 1, then click Disable. Once that's finished, hit Apply. Now you're back at Network Connections, Advanced, then 2.4 GHz Wireless Access Point 1, then disable that as well, and hit Apply. Once both wireless APs are disabled, click broadband connection, then hit settings at the bottom, uncheck the box beside internet connection firewall, then beside internet protocol, change it from obtain IP address to no IP address. Once you hit apply, you will no longer be connected to the internet. Note here that you could also change the DNS server. Now click release and then quickly click apply, then click apply once again. Now click on Network, and then Settings. Once in the Settings under General, change the IP address from 192.168.1.1 to 192.168.1. anything. This way there's no conflicts between the routers trying to use the same IP. Now under the Bridge section, check the box beside Broadband Connection, and uncheck the boxes by both wireless APs. Then change IP address distribution from DHCP server to disabled. Okay guys, once you click apply, 
the Verizon box will be put into bridge mode and will no longer be assigning IP addresses. So don't worry if everything stops working here. Hit apply and then take an ethernet cable and plug one end into any of the four ports, except the WAN port. Then plug the other end into the WAN intranet port of your new primary router. In our case, the ASRock G10. Next, plug your PC into your new router and reboot both routers. Once they've rebooted, log into your new router and make sure its IP address range is 192.168.1.0. If it isn't, refer to your new router's manual on changing it. For the ASRock G10, it likes to assign 192.168.3. Now, check and see if the Verizon box is assigning your router a public IP address. You might need to click renew in your new router settings if it is assigned an IP to your new router. Your new router is now the primary and your Verizon box is just a bridge from the coax to the internet. I know this process was a bit long, but it should work similarly for any modem slash router combo. I'll skip over the settings for the ASRock G10 as that process is just like with any other Wi-Fi router. At this point, just an internet connection will be going from your Verizon quantum router to the ASRock G10 or your router of choice, allowing the ASRock G10 to assign IPs, filter network traffic. Now we can rest assured that our pesky ISP won't be snooping around at our internal network traffic. Just make sure you give your Wi-Fi network a clever name like the land before time, like I chose for my apartment. Thanks for watching guys. If you like this video, give it a like, get subscribed if you want to see more. I will have links to products talked about in the video's description. Again, this was Andrew with East Coast Tech and I'll see you next time.